defense has often been a staple when defining the Chicago Bears. And back in 2018, with the acquisition of Khalil Mack, the Vic Vangio-led Bear defense swept the NFL with its abundance of turnovers and sacks, leading the league with 36 turnovers and tied for third in sacks at 50. Bear fans know the story after that. Fangio leaves to helm the Denver Broncos, the Bears hire former Colts head coach Chuck Pagano as the new defensive coordinator, and the regression of the Bears defense persists throughout the 2019 and 2020 seasons. The turnover regression was bound to happen, however the regression in sacks was often disappointing due to the all-star front the Bears host. Star linebacker Khalil Mack, Pro Bowl linebacker Robert Quinn, Pro Bowl defensive tackle Akeem Hicks, and nose tackle Eddie Goldman. The Bears recorded 32 sacks in 2019, ranking 24th in the league, and 35 sacks in 2020, ranking 17th. Injuries were a heavy blow for the Bears in 2019. However, in 2020, they had a nearly healthy defensive line and still did not show improvement based on who was in their front four. As of week 8 in the 2021 season, the Bears are tied for first in the NFL with 21 sacks. So what happened? The Bears hired Sean Desai as defensive coordinator this past offseason, who was the previous safeties coach for the team and has been with the organization since 2013. Desai is from the Vic Vangio coaching tree, and he has found a way to utilize his all-star defensive line to bring them back to the Vangio days of 2018. Desai stresses balance for our defense, where he wants the pass rush and the coverage to balance each other out and play off each other's strengths. According to SIS, the Bears use a four-man pass rush 81% of the time, which is fifth in the league and only blitz 15% of the time, which is 29th in the league. This allows the Bears to drop seven into coverage more often and allow the Bears below average secondary to have help from linebackers while also disguising their coverages. Another stat I find interesting is that although the Bears are currently leading the league in sacks, they are 31st in the league in pressures at only 19%. When watching Bears film, you can identify that the Bears defensive line will often drop unique rushes with stunts on crucial downs and limit the amount of stunts they use on less crucial downs. A stunt occurs when a defensive tackle lines up in between two defenders, often the tackle and the guard, and a defensive end lining up outside the tackle. In a stunt, the tackle is defined as the penetrator, as he will rush in between both linemen, drawing a double team, allowing the end to loop inside for a free lane at the quarterback. The defensive versus offensive lineman matchups are often cat and mouse throughout the entire game. What kind of move the defensive end is going to attempt to get by the lineman, and what counter will the offensive lineman make to make sure he doesn't allow the defender past him. Being able to call the unique pass rush designs that catch the offensive line off guard is key to having a successful defense. Here in week 3 against the Browns, Baker Mayfield and the offense are on their own 29-yard line and in a 3rd and 5 situation. The Bears deploy a 4-man front, heavy to the left side of the offensive line. The play design to side draws up is a stunt by defensive end Mario Edwards Jr. and the penetrator to be Angelo Blackson. This will be labeled a TE stunt, as the type of stunt is called by the penetrator, then the looper. But what Desai also draws up is for Khalil Mack on the right, to stun as well and loop in behind the first stun of Edwards. Due to the Bears lining up three defensive linemen to the left of the center, the Browns call for a three-man slide protection to the left to help counter a heavy pass rush, and call man protection on the right, with right tackle Jack Conklin manned on Khalil Mack, and right guard Wyatt Teller manned on inside linebacker Roquan Smith in the event of a blitz. During the play, once Blackson makes his penetrating move, Edwards performs a stun, and then due to the slide protection, center J.C. Treader is able to switch onto Edwards, forcing him away from the pocket. But since Mack is also stunting inside, Edwards now serves as a pseudo block on right guard Wyatt Teller for Mack to swoop into the pocket. Baker believes that since the stun was picked up, he can step into the pocket towards where the stun came from. But since Mack was able to come into the pocket unopposed, Baker's escape is gone and he must now scramble away and is taken down from the edge speed rush of Robert Quinn. Here in Week 7 against the Packers, Aaron Rodgers and the offense are on the Bears' 36-yard line, the edge of field goal range for their kicker Mason Crosby, and the down is 3rd and 10. The Bears are in a nickel formation, which is when either a lineman or a linebacker is subbed off in replace of a defensive back, here in number 36 strong safety, DeAndre Houston Carson. Houston is threatening to blitz as he is lined up in the B-gap pre-snap. Since there are five defenders on the line of scrimmage, the Packers call a 5-0 protection, which means each lineman is assigned to the defender, threatening their gap. The Bears' play design this time around is an ET stunt, where Khalil Mack will be the penetrator in the B-gap, and defensive end Bilal Nichols is the looper. This is not the only stunt, as a TE stunt on the right with Hicks as the penetrator and Quinn as the looper is also occurring. Houston doesn't rush at all in this play, as his goal is to hold the right guard Royce Newman with the threat of a blitz and avoid switching his focus to one of the stuntmen on the left. Once the play begins and Houston threatens a blitz, Mack comes in from Newman's right. But when Newman realizes Houston is not a threat to blitz, he sees Nichols coming in from his left and turns his focus to him, 
not realizing that Mac is also penetrating from his right. Newman's pickup of Mac is too late, as Mac is allowed to bull rush into Newman and break through the line into the pocket and take down Rodgers, knocking them out of field goal range and forcing them to punt. Here in week two against the Bengals, the Bengals are on the Bears' 35 yard line, once again at the edge of field goal range on a third down. The Bears deploy a four man front, but this time instead of Mac and Quinn being on opposite sides of the defensive line as they normally are, they are both lined up together left of the tackle Jonah William. They call a TE stunt, since Mac is the inside defender, as he will penetrate between the guard and the tackle while Quinn is the looper. What is another key point about this formation is that defensive tackle Akeem Hicks is lined up in the one technique directly in front of the center's right shoulder. Normally when a defense decides to line up their two star defensive ends on the same side, a three or four man slide protection would be in order. But since Hicks, a stud defensive tackle, is lined up right on the center, the center cannot afford to slide to the left and hope the right guard is able to slide and pick up Hicks before breaking into the pocket. This is Desai using his defensive linemen and the threat they each bring to its fullest capability. The Bengals end up calling a two-man side protection to the left and man protection for the center, right guard, and right tackle, while using running back Samaj P. Ryan as a check and release block on the end. As the ball is snapped, you can see P. Ryan's vision look towards Quinn and his rush. However, when Quinn executes his stunt, P. Ryan checks up and releases while looking for Burrow to dump the ball to him. On this stun, Robert Quinn executes one of the cleanest loops I have seen in such a fluid motion, and since there was only a two-man slide protection, Quinn is allowed an easy lane into the pocket to sack Joe Burrow and put the Bengals out of field goal range. While the Bears do not often pressure the quarterback this year, Desai knows how and when to dial up effective four-man pass rushes on crucial downs to help get the defense off the field. With such an effective four-man pass rush, Desai is able to drop more men into coverage more consistently and help disguise coverages to confuse the quarterback post-snap. According to SIS Tendency Reports, the Bears show a two-high safety shell 54% of the time, and a one-high safety shell 38% of the time. However, post-snap, the Bears end up in a two-high safety shell only 38% of the time, and a one-high safety shell 42% of the time. When a quarterback is making his pre-snap reads, he is identifying the shell of the defense to see if it is in a two-high safety shell, often named middle field open coverage, or a one-man high safety shell, or middle field close coverage. This read of a quarterback will help him decipher where his receivers will likely be open during their routes. A quarterback understands that a defensive coverage may change once the ball is snapped, so keeping the quarterback on his toes during the play is crucial in the pass defense. Here in week three against the Lions, the Bears come out in a nickel formation, showing a two high safety shell with free safety Eddie Jackson and strong safety Deion Bush. The Lions are running two go routes on the edges, with tight end TJ Hawkinson running a post route down the middle and running back DeAndre Swift running swing left. Pre-snap, quarterback Jared Goff's best prediction is going to be the Bears running cover two zone, where the safeties each take one half of the field, while the cornerbacks play soft and sink it to the flats. For cover two, since the middle of the field is open, the primary hotspots for receivers is going to be the middle of the field and the hole shots on the left and right in between the cornerbacks sitting in the flat and the high safety over the top. The routes Detroit are running are great for a cover two beater, since you will have Hawkinson running the post route in the middle designed to split the safeties and for the go routes to be in between the corner and the safety for Goff to fire it into the hole shot. The Bears are also showing blitz on this play, with both inside linebackers lined up in the A-gap. Because of this, Hawkinson is also aware that he is a hot route, since in the event the linebackers blitz, the Lions will not have enough men blocking for the routes to develop, and Goff can hit him four yards out wide open. These are all pre-snap reads by Goff. What the Bears defense is actually doing post-snap is a cover three zone, with Eddie Jackson taking the left third of the field, Deion Bush taking the middle third of the field, and cornerback Kendall Vendor falling back and taking the right third of the field. The linebackers do not blitz and fall back into hook zones, while Jalen Johnson and Duke Shelley have curl zones, deeper zones in the flats. Due to this disguised coverage, both hole shots are now taken away in the go routes since the cornerbacks will sit higher and the defensive back covering the deep third will be closer to disrupt the throw. Not an impossible throw, but one more difficult than Goff had imagined pre-snap. The middle post route by Hawkinson is also difficult for Goff due to the hook zone by the linebacker and the moving safety in the middle deep part of the field, which leaves him double teamed. After going through his progressions and seeing his reads, Goff decides to dump it off to Swift for a six yard gain. On a third down and nine, the Bears once again deploy a two high safety shell. The pre-snap read by Goff would be a cover two man, with man coverage being the assumption due to the defenders being lined up on top of the receivers. This play, the Lions have a deep in route to attack the middle of the field, a deep seam route, and a deep out route. 
Goff has a lot of different options here if the coverage changes post-snap. He can hit the in route if the design is cover two, since the receiver will be coming in under the high safety and between the corner. He can hit the seam route if it is a cover three, since he will have one-on-one -on -one coverage up high with the middle of the field defender. Or he can hit the deep out route if it is man-to-man -man coverage and hope the receiver St. Brown makes a good move to beat the corner outside. The play ends up being cover one robber. Eddie Jackson comes down and covers the lower middle in what is called the robber, and the other safety, Deion Bush, takes the high middle. The Bears run man coverage, which now takes away the seam route due to the robber and defensive back doubling the receiver during the initial window. And Goff goes to his next progression, which is the out route, which can be effective against man coverage, but since the Bears force Goff to make this deep out route throw, which takes precise accuracy, Goff overthrows St. Brown, resulting in an incompletion and a fourth down. In week five against the Raiders, on a crucial third down and two on the Bears' 33-yard line, the Bears stacked the box to possibly defend the run and show single high safety Eddie Jackson. Nathan Peterman came in to replace Derek Carr at quarterback for a couple of plays this drive due to injury, and Desai and the defense were able to capitalize on this play with disguising their coverage. In Peterman's pre-snap read, with a single high safety and pressed corners, a typical outcome can be cover one man or cover three zone. The Raiders run Darren Waller on a drag route across the middle, slot receiver Hunter Renfro running an in route, Henry Ruggs running a post route at the top, Brian Edwards running a go route on the bottom, and running back Josh Jacobs running an up and out route from the backfield. Right before the snap happens, the Bears safeties fall back into a two high deep coverage. The Bears end up running a hybrid of man coverage and zone coverage with all the under defenders running man coverage except for corner Kendall Van Dorr, who has a curl zone. The man coverage linebackers Roquan Smith and Alec Ogletree are bracketing Waller and Jacobs. If Waller's route takes him to the left of the field, then Smith will take on Waller and Ogletree will take on Jacobs. If Waller's route would take him to the right, then Ogletree would then cover Waller and Smith to handle Jacobs. During the play, both linebackers are able to keep close separation on the underneath drag routes. Jalen Johnson is able to jam Edwards, and nickelback Duke Shelley is able to stick with Renfro in the in route. Now, I'm not going to ignore that Ruggs is going to be wide open on this post route after getting into the soft zone between the corner and the deep safety. This is an easy completion that would result in a first down, but Peterman, after seeing most of his initial reads covered, decides to scramble out. The pocket was not as nearly as collapsed as he had felt, but the change in coverage post snap was enough to have him not believe that he would have an open receiver and attempt to scramble for the two yards he needed. He believes that with the drag routes cleared that were in man coverage, the middle of the field should be open for a scramble to pick up the first down. But the Bears defensive end Mario Edwards is assigned as a QB spy, as a quarterback scramble on third and two is a clear possibility. Edwards is keeping his eyes on Peter the entire time he's engaged with center Andre James, and when Peterman scrambles, he disengages from his rush and forces Peterman to cut into a different run enough time for Mac to come in from behind him and stop him short of a first down. If Derek Carr is in, does he stay confident in the pocket to find rugs over the middle? Probably. But the Bears design a coverage to help confuse the backup quarterback who was thrust into the game during a crucial drive. The coverage was solid, and the pass rush design allowed for a good counter, all pieces of emphasis that Sean Desai wanted to implement when he took over as defensive coordinator. After a clear regression in the two years after Vic Vangio left, the Bears were looking to go back to the norm of being a standout defense that can keep offenses on their toes. Sean Desai was able to come into his first year as a defensive coordinator and make an immediate impact on the improvement of the defensive line that are the stars of this roster. The Bears defense still has work to do, and Desai is up for the challenge. Every time Mack and Quinn make a sack this year, the city of Chicago knows they are the new monsters of the midway.